Hello. Today we're going to talk about Ryobi's awesome cordless airstrike nail guns, specifically the 16 and 18 gauge versions. Nail guns, nail guns everywhere. The Ryobi Airstrike nail guns are good, really good. They're lightweight, well balanced, they use a variety of nails and brads for whatever you need, and they use standard Ryobi batteries so you can use them all day long as long as you've got a charger running in the background. They're also inexpensive. We like inexpensive. Inexpensive is good. The two I have are the Airstrike P320 18 gauge brad nailer and the Airstrike P325 16 gauge 2.5 inch straight finish nailer. They live in a mount here on my French fleet wall where I also store their ammunition. Both Ryobi nail guns share the same general characteristics. They use standard Ryobi rechargeable batteries. These are the larger ones, but you can also use the smaller ones. They weigh about the same. Even with the larger batteries, they aren't too heavy for you to easily maneuver them as you're doing a nailing job. They have rubber edges on them so that if you lay them down on a job, it's not going to scratch anything. They do have belt clips that mount here and here. I don't have mine because I don't have need for them but you can mount these and carry them on your belt. Also, they're both green. It's not easy being green. Loading brad nails into the P320 nail gun is simplicity itself. Here's an example of a variety of different types of ammunition you might want to use for this particular nail gun. All you have to do to load it is lower this slider, grab the brads that you want to use, lay them in the hopper, and close the slider. Loading finishing nails into the P325 16 gauge nailer is a little different, but just as simple. Here I have examples of two inch and one and a half inch nails that you could use in this gun. What you do to load them is you pull this slider down and it locks in place. Then you take the nails that you want to use, these are two inch, and you slide them in. And then you just release this little black button and you're good to go, ready to nail whatever comes into your path. You can adjust the depth of the nail strike by twisting this adjustment knob on the front of either one of the guns. And you can adjust the amount of air behind each nail strike by adjusting these knobs on the back of each one of the nail guns. Making adjustments to the depth and air pressure used for each nail strike allows you to modify your gun to work with different types of wood or materials. I've never had a jam with either one of these nail guns, but such things are theoretically possible. But that's okay, Ryobi's got you covered. The first thing you do, as you do with all power tools, is you remove power. That will solve problems later. Then you flip this up, this latch up, and you can clear the jam. But you have to remove the nails from the hopper first, because if you don't, the nails will come flying out like this. That's bad. So take your nails out first before you go to the hopper. Once your nail hopper is empty, it's a simple matter to simply flip open the hatch here and clear any jam you happen to have. Put everything back together. Replace your nails. And you can go on to more jam-free nailing. That was the 18 gauge nail gun, but the 16 gauge works just the same. Both nail guns have built-in LED headlights that come on when you push this trigger. The 16 gauge has one light and the 18 gauge has two lights. I don't know why. Now that our nail guns are fully loaded, we're ready to start nailing things together. Now, you could. I got stuff to do. All right, so we'll just use this gun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about ways to control the gun. We only got one gun now, but that's okay because the features I'm gonna show you are the same on both. The Airstrike nail guns have two modes, standard fire and bump fire. To fire single nails, flip this switch in the base of the nail gun to the single nail position. To use bump fire, flip the switch to the multiple nail position. Let me demonstrate both of them to you. First, some lumber. And then, if you're going to be using a nail gun, eye and hearing protection are a must. You may not think you need it. Trust me, you do. We just... Fire single nails. You 
you go through a lot of nails real fast in bump fire mode, which is why I call it machine gun mode, and it's why they sell the nails in lots of 5,000. Here's how it works. So as you can see, bump fire mode allows you to nail a lot of things really fast. And if you're lazy like me, it saves a lot of trigger finger effort because you pull the trigger one time until you're out of ammunition. If you buy one or both of these guns, make sure you buy lots of nails. Or ammunition as I call it, because you're going to use a lot. That covers the basics of how to use either one of these guns. Nailed it. I've had these guns for some time and have used them on a number of projects. So how have they worked out? Well, the 18 gauge gun has been very helpful here in the shop when I've been making French cleats. To attach the French cleat on the back of a tool mount, I usually use glue and clamp it together, which means I have to wait overnight. Well, if I want to test something out, if I want to see what it looks like right away, I can just use this brad nailer, bang some brads into it, hang it up, and see what it looks like. And if I don't like it, I can tear it apart and try something different. And when I'm ready to build the real French cleat, well, I put glue down and I put the brads in and I'm able to dispense with some of the clamping I've been doing and it just helps things move along faster. So this has been a welcome addition. It makes me faster at building the French cleats. And I got a lot of French cleats to cover, so uh, it's nice to have this. The larger 16 gauge gun has been very helpful with molding. We just redid our hall bathroom. I did a video on that and we also redid the tile in our kitchen and breakfast area and both of those required new quarter round molding to be installed around the baseboards. I decided to go away from wood and use a plastic alternative for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't have to paint it because I'm lazy and I was able to put it on as is which is some basic sanding and two, it's water resistant or basically waterproof. So having plastic molding as the shoe molding around the baseboard in the kitchen and the bathroom it's kind of nice to have if there's a spill or something in there, it doesn't damage the wood. Well, this has turned out to be very effective at putting molding in. I'm able to just, just cut it on the miter saw, take it in there, bang a few uh, nails in there with this, and it's a dream. I've never put down molding as quickly as I have with this, and I really like the way it maneuvers in a small space. I like the way that it holds it very securely. The two inch nails go right through into the backer board through the sheetrock into the 2x4s behind and hold the molding pretty securely. Very pleased with this. Going to be doing some more molding with this. May do some crown molding with it because it's so effective uh, and, and so easy to handle with one hand. I had a lot of molding on the lumber rack and I had so much fun with that nail gun. I have only this much left. I think I might have a nail gun addiction. I was going to tell you what I found wrong with these, but honestly, I haven't found many vices with them. They're easy to use, easy to reload, easy to store. The nails are relatively inexpensive for very large numbers of them. I've got 25,000 nails on the wall over there, and I'm banging through them as I do projects. So I, I, I just can't recommend these enough. I wish I'd gotten them some time ago because they would have made a lot of jobs easier. I'm going to be building some things in the future, some new bar stools for the kitchen and so forth, and I'm going to use the the 16 gauge nail gun to reduce the number of clamps I have to use and make some permanent connections there. And as I said earlier, some additional molding is going to be going in. But these are nice to have when you need them. And storing them up out of the way on the French cleats keeps them available at all times. And when I, when I need them, I just pull them off the rack and use them quickly and put them back. And they just save me so much time. They were inexpensive compared to a lot of the other brands. I know a lot of people say Ryobi isn't a good brand for serious carpenters. Well, I think you can look at me and know that I'm not a serious person in any way, shape, or form, but for the things that I do out here, these have done fantastically well. I love them a lot. Can't say enough good about them. Thanks to our patrons, you make all this possible. We really appreciate your help. I really like these guns. They do a great job. They work well for me, and I think Ryobi makes some pretty good tools, especially these nail guns. So that's my latest tool review. If you like this sort of thing and you want to see more, you want to see the stuff that we build with these tools, like and subscribe. Join us on the channel. We'd love to have you. We're always building stuff, making more stuff. Well, that's all I got for today. I'll see you next time.